Hi, everyone. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Um, welcome back to our 10th episode of our weekly Spanish Q&A session. We're so glad to be back um, on this Tuesday, June 30th, uh, to present another mini Spanish lesson to you, our amazing viewers. Thanks so much for being here. Gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. We're so happy to have you as always. Uh, whether you're a newcomer or a returning viewer, we love to see your faces, love to hear your questions and your comments. I'm David, Josue David. Um, I am right now in the United States, in Nashville, Tennessee, where I've been for the past 10 weeks or so. And I'm here broadcasting with my colleague, David. David, how are you? Hola a todos y a todas. Um... Thank you, David, for the introduction. Uh, my name is David. Yo me llamo David. And I'm broadcasting here from Bogota, Colombia, from South America. Um, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, this is always very exciting. And I'm always very motivated to see your uh, questions, your comments, answers. And here we are again. Um, and we brought a, an interesting topic for you today, which is more related to grammar, but we will see. Uh, David, how are you in the in the United States? Yeah, estoy bien. Um, estoy enfocándome en el trabajo que um, estoy haciendo para Babel. I'm focusing on work that I'm doing for Babel, um, but not right now. Right now I'm here um, with you amazing people and with you, David. So that's where my mind is at. But um, in que estas trabajando tu, David? Or what are you working on or, or, or focusing on? Es una buena pregunta. It's a good question. Uh, bueno, a todos puedo decirles que estoy trabajando eh, mucho. Estoy trabajando en algunos proyectos desde aquí, desde Bogotá. Y actualmente estoy pensando en las preparaciones para mi vuelo a Alemania, donde vivo. Uh, I'm working a lot on different projects. I'm also thinking about uh, the preparations uh, for my flight uh, back to Germany, where I'm working. Um, so this is uh, basically a, a short conversation where we use certain verbs like trabajar en, pensar en. I like to work on something, to think about, or to think of something. Uh, and this is the topic for today. Um, but before we jump into the topic that we prepared uh, for today's session, maybe we can have a quick review, a quick recap of what we talked about last week uh, when we introduced the verbs uh, taren in ando, yendo, which is, uh, yeah, which are verbs that correspond to the ing form in English. So maybe we can review the last sentence that we uh, had in the in the last session where we saw when to use these forms um, and we start with the sentence uh, with the question actually cuánto tiempo llevas mm -hmm, español so here we have the verb aprender and we saw that um, sometimes we can use these forms that end in ando yendo with verbs like estar but also with verbs like llevar and other verbs like keep, to keep, to keep doing something. Um, so we would invite you um, now to um, let us know what the, how, what the verb form, uh, the right verb form is here in this question. So what, what would be the right option? <clears throat> I like Wendy's comment, I hate autocorrect. That happens to me so much too. Especially when I'm typing on my phone in Spanish and I forget to change the keyboard settings to Spanish. Uh -huh. And it tries to, it thinks I'm typing in English, it just comes up with some crazy stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. Everyone's doing a great job so far. These are great answers. Yeah. This is great. Maybe, David, you can pick a comment. So let's go ahead and choose. OK, I'm going to choose Janice's comment. Um, 
partly because it's correct and also partly because my mom's name is Janet. So it's a name that's near and dear to my heart. So um, <laughs> the correct answer here would be aprendiendo, which is the progressive form of the verb aprender to learn, as we talked about last week. So we could say, ¿Cuánto tiempo llevas aprendiendo español? Which would translate roughly to, how much time have you been learning Spanish for? Or for how much time do you keep learning Spanish? Something like that. But you get the idea. Um, it's uh, a way to indicate that the learning is continuing and we want to know for how long it's been going on. Mm -hmm. So um, good job to everyone who got this right. And I think we're ready to move into this week's topic, David. Yeah, I think uh, before we do that, uh, it would be nice if you could also add the time that you've been learning Spanish for. Uh, mm. In Spanish, of course, uh, something like llevo aprendiendo español eh, muchos años, algunos meses, uh, just for us to see, um, yeah, how how your experience has been when learning Spanish and how long it has uh, taken for you. Mm. Uh, for example, I can say that llevo aprendiendo alemán 12 años. Uh, it's a long time. Yeah, I've been learning German for a long time. I studied German as a foreign language. But you can also do um, post a comment saying how long uh, you've been learning Spanish for. That would be amazing. And yeah, just, um, just that. And then, yeah, we can just start with our topic for today, verbs with prepositions. Uh, but Davy, I, I have a question. Verbs, prepositions, what is that? What a great question, David. And I'd love to answer it because I love verbs and I love prepositions. Um, verbs we've talked about a lot in these lessons, but if you've ever learned a foreign language or you've taken a grammar class, you have a lot of experience with verbs. They are ways to talk about an action, something that's being done, or even verbs like ser and a star represent something is. Uh, so it can be very action-based, but it can also connect a subject like a person or an idea or a thing with some sort of modifier or adjective, yo soy um, americano, I am American, something like that. So there are lots of verbs in Spanish, of course, and we've talked about so many of them, but a lot of them, when you use them, you have to use a certain preposition. And a preposition is just a fancy word for most of the time, these small little word units that stand by themselves that convey um, relationships. So we could say with is a preposition. We could say to, from. Um, these often short words that um, can describe location. So at, um, a word that describes time, before, after. Um, and we use these prepositions in English with verbs um, in sort of the same way that we use them in Spanish, but there are a couple rules that uh, are different here. So we're going to go over specific verbs in Spanish um, and some in English that require prepositions to be used with them. And you'll start to get an idea for how English and Spanish can be the same, but also different mm -hmm. in the way they use verbs and prepositions. Mm -hmm. So um, let's start with some examples of verbs and prepositions in Spanish that actually map back to English pretty easily and in a pretty straightforward way that makes it um, pretty easy to understand how we'd use them. So an example is hablar con. We know that hablar is to talk or to speak. Um, it's one of the, the most used verbs in Spanish. It's a regular uh, AR verb, so it's conjugated regularly. And we know that the, the preposition con, uh, or we might not know, but uh, we, we are learning that the preposition con means with. So it's pretty easy to see that hablar con means to talk with. If we have a sentence like, con quien estás hablando, you see the progressive form that we learned about last week. Estás hablando, you are speaking. And then if we translate con quien, um, it would be with whom. So we can say, with whom are you speaking or who are you speaking with? And then an answer would be, yo estoy hablando, I am speaking con mi madre, with my mom. So that's pretty easy to grasp, I would say. Um, with means, or con means with, hablar means to speak, so you get to speak with. Let's, mm -hmm. um, I'll turn it over to you, David, for another example of a verb in a preposition combination like this. Yeah, that was a great explanation, David. So we just saw verbs, a verb like hablar with the preposition con, uh, but we can also use this verb with other prepositions. 
So when we use it with the prepositions de or sobre, uh, that would mean to talk about. So uh, for instance, we have the, the example sentence, hablemos del nuevo proyecto después de esta reunión. Um, and here we have the verb hablar. Um, this is imperative form, let's talk, hablemos del nuevo proyecto, about the new project after this meeting. So here we see that if we uh, choose a different preposition, uh, we are willing to change the meaning as well or the, the, the contrast of this verb. So in the first example, we were talking about the person uh, we were talking with. And in this case, we are talking about a topic. So uh, the preposition about in English or with in English changes as well. And that also happens in Spanish. So here we have hablar de and or sobre. So we can also uh, exchange the prepositions here. We can also say in Spanish, hablemos sobre el nuevo proyecto después de esta reunión. Just for you to know that uh, both prepositions are um, used uh, with the same verb. Uh, but we have also another verb um, that's, um, Acostumbrarse a, it's a, it's a long word, acostumbrarse a, to get accustomed to. No me puedo acostumbrar al clima de Bogotá. So uh, some weeks ago we uh, learned a bit more about reflexive verbs. And in this case we have also a reflexive verb. So you see that little se at the end of acostumbrar uh, is changed to me uh, when I'm talking about myself. So no me puedo acostumbrar al clima de Bogota here in my in my city. I can get accustomed to the climate of Bogota. So here we see that the preposition a uh, tends to be tends to mean in English too. So there are many many verbs in English uh, that are used with the preposition to. Uh, and in Spanish we have also uh, the same equivalence, uh, but we will learn more about it. And another example is. Um, a very known verb that we can uh, uh, recognize even though we don't speak Spanish or the other way around when I'm when I was learning English, which is invitar, invitar a, uh, which means to, invi to invite to. Me gustaría invitarlos a mi fiesta de cumpleaños. I'd like to invite them to my birthday party. Uh, so as we can see, the verb is very clear, and here we are. Um, introducing uh, the event, the party, the place, with the preposition a in, in Spanish, as it happens also in English with the preposition to. So those are verbs that are easy to understand because uh, in both languages, Spanish and English, we use them with these little words, with these little prepositions. Uh, another thing that I, I, I like to say is that preposition means, pre is a prefix that means before. So um, this is much clearer in Spanish because a preposition uh, needs to have a word uh, following this preposition. So the preposition cannot be at the end of, of a sentence in Spanish. Uh, in English, that's possible. Who am, I, who am I talking with? That would be the question. And in Spanish, we have to place that preposition in the beginning. Con quien estás hablando? Um, but um, yeah. So we have different prepositions in Spanish. We have prepositions like en, uh, which uh, generally means in, uh, but we have also other prepositions for a, de, con. And don't worry, we will uh, have a look at their uh, meanings in, in, in a couple of seconds because we uh, had a, uh, we collected many verbs with, um, with these different prepositions and um, I would recommend you to uh, grab a pen and a piece of paper because uh, it's, I think, uh, 15 verbs um, that are very useful in Spanish and uh, we use them with prepositions. Um, what if we start with the preposition in, David? What verbs do we use with that preposition? Okay, so as David mentioned, the preposition n often means in, so to be in something, but it can also mean on. But there are also some verbs where you use the preposition n, and it might not make a lot of sense at first in English. Let's look at the first example, which is pensar en. So when we say pensar en, that actually means to think about, um, which doesn't really make a lot of sense if you're a native English speaker, but here's um, how it would be used in a sentence. We could say something like, siempre estoy pensando en ti. 
I'm always thinking about you. And you have to resist the instinct or the urge to use a preposition like sobre or um, which would mean about because we in Spanish use pensar en instead of pensar sobre. And this is just something that you're going to have to um, practice and practice until it becomes a little more straightforward. But the point of today's episode is to give you some verbs, like David said, that you can write down and use over and over um, to kind of get you using Spanish as a native speaker would. So here's the first example, pensar en. We also have um, the verb trabajar en. And if you remember at the beginning of the episode, I asked David, en que estás trabajando? This one sort of maps back to English a little bit. Um, so you could think of it as to work on something, but be careful because en can also mean in. You're not saying work in something, you're saying work on something. So you could say something like, Maria y Antonia están trabajando en un proyecto muy importante. Maria and Antonia are working on a very important project. So trabajar in, um, to work on, and we, are, we talked about pensar in, to think about. And then we have one more, confiar en, so that means to trust. And in English, we usually just say to trust so-and-so or to trust something. And we don't even have to have um, a little preposition there. But in Spanish, we would say, confiamos en ustedes. We trust you all. Um, in English, this kind of exists too. You know, we say things like, we trust in the process or we trust in God. Um, and those aren't unheard of, but in Spanish, it's much more common just to have the preposition en after confiar. So David, is that it for, it looks like that's it for the preposition en. Maybe we yes. should move to the next one. Yes, exactly. So now we have a group of verbs uh, where we will need another preposition, which is por. So let's start with this very useful verb uh, to worry about. How do we say that in Spanish? Preocuparse por. And again, we have here a reflexive verb, preocuparse. And if we look at the sentence, uh, we adapt this uh, little um, reflexive pronoun. No debes preocuparte or ese problema, you shouldn't worry about that problem. <clears throat> so as we see, it's uh, very, it's very easy. Preocuparse. When you say I'm, I'm worried, estoy preocupado. Uh, but if you say, um, if you wanna explain the reason, uh, me preocupo por el problema. Me preocupo por la situación actual. Um, I am. Um, um, I would like to give you a tip. Um, especially when learning these verbs with prepositions, because these verbs are very specific and they work with these little words. So um, when I was learning verbs with prepositions in, in, in English and in German, for example, I, I always um, came up with a sentence as something that um, is affecting me. Uh, so um, maybe you can write down these verbs and you can also uh, build a sentence that is relevant to you. Uh, me preocupo por eh, muchos problemas. Me preocupo por la falta de trabajo, for example. I'm worried about, I worry about the lack of work, for example, uh, under the current situation. So uh, that would be my tip. In the middle of the explanations of verbs uh, that we use with the preposition por. Um, and there are um, some other verbs um, uh, like preguntar. Maybe you have already um, seen this. You might have seen this verb um, in other instances, preguntar. So you can actually ask someone. Uh, in Spanish, you would say, te pregunto, I ask you. But if you want to ask about something, uh, you are going to use the preposition por in Spanish, preguntar por algo. Quiero preguntar por esta oferta. I want to ask about this offer. Uh, so you don't, don't get confused by that because sometimes we don't need a preposition uh, with this verb. I just ask someone, le pregunto a alguien. Uh, but if we want to ask about a certain topic, a specific topic, then we use the preposition for. And uh, the last verb with um, the preposition for is also very useful. Um, ah, I want to show this sentence here because Janice says, me preocupo por mis proyectos. That's a very good example, uh, a very good use. Uh, of the verb preocuparse plus the preposition for. Uh, that's great. Uh, and the last verb um, with por 
that I would like to present to you is uh, Decidirse Por. So just imagine that we have two options and we have to, de uh, we have to decide on one of them. So in Spanish, uh, this verb, in this case, when we have two options, three options, and we have to find one way, uh, we will use it in, in the reflexive form and we use it with the preposition for to decide on. Tengo dos planes. Me decido por el segundo. Yeah. I have two plans. I'm deciding on the second one. Uh, so this is how we can use this verb with por. Um, if you have any questions, just feel free to post them. Um, we are not ignoring you. Um, and in the, in the meantime, I can ask uh, David, David, what other verbs do we have with uh, other prepositions? So let's move on to the next preposition, which is a. Uh, this one, uh, I usually translate as to, because in most cases you would use it as to, you know, ir a la tienda to go to the store. Um, but also there are a couple uh, instances where you might use it uh, as kind of what we call the impersonal a ah before a direct object that is um, a person. This is something we haven't really talked about. Um, we've skirted around a bit, but, and we will continue to skirt around it for now, but we'll get back to it in a later um, episode because it deserves its own topic. Uh, for now, let's just think of a ah as two. Um, and we'll see some cases like in this sentence where you need to include it after a specific verb, but it might not make sense in English to, to translate it as to. So an example is asistir a, which means to attend. And in an example sentence like yo asistí a esta escuela por 10 años, or I attended the school for 10 years, you see that in English, we actually wouldn't even have a preposition. We would just say attend school. But in Spanish, you need to say, asistir a la escuela, asistir a la clase, um, whatever. So that's another example of a verb in Spanish that requires um, this preposition a. So then there's a next um, example that we have for you, which is saber a. And this one is kind of funny to me just because saber, we've learned the difference between saber and conocer and we translate them as to know. Uh, saber being to know information or um, facts, as opposed to conocer, which is to be familiar with people. Um, but in this case, when you have a ah following saber, it actually translates to taste like. So we would use it in an example sentence like, estos dulces saben a fresa, these sweets taste like strawberries. And um, that's just kind of like a, a unique Spanish expression that doesn't, really translate back to English very well. We don't have something in English that uses the verb to know to refer to taste, but here um, you see just a, it's kind of a, a funny, clever little way of conveying an idea that I really like, saber a. And then there's also a verb oler, which means to smell. So if something um, huele a, smells like, um, that's another example of, of a verb that um, uses a afterwards. I don't know, um, David, I'll throw it over to you for this next one. Yeah, so, and we will also use this preposition with the verb comenzar. Uh, so as we can see, to start, to, it's basically, it's using the same preposition. So, uh, for instance, we have the example sentence, comenzamos a preparar la cena ya. We are starting to prepare dinner already. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward, I think. Um, this, this last verb uh, that we have here with the preposition a, uh, there are many other verbs uh, with this preposition and with the other prepositions that we already presented. Uh, but these are very useful. These are the most important ones. And this is just for the purpose of introducing this, this topic. So we will use them also in our further conversations. We will also use them in more example sentences. As you can see, we are also integrating uh, topics that we already talked about before. And uh, now we have a uh, a verb uh, with a very um, useful preposition, which is de. So um, here I have a, an example sentence. Um, with a verb that is a little bit difficult to master in Spanish because we have two similar forms. So um, the verb to remember 
uh, which means acordarse de, uh, but we also have another form which is recordar, which is not reflexive and has no preposition. But let's take this um, verb acordarse de, um, and let's have a look at, a, at, a, at an example sentence. No me acuerdo del título de tu canción favorita, um, which translates in English, uh, I don't remember the title of your favorite song. No me acuerdo del título de tu canción favorita. And here we can also say, no recuerdo el título de tu canción favorita. So it's another form, it's a synonym, and we can all use both forms. Uh, but don't get confused. This one um, is reflexive, acordarse, and uses a preposition, which is de. Um, uh, try that out. Uh, try to um, come up with your own sentence um, where you yeah, remember something. And um, meanwhile, I can add another example sentence, um, which is also very useful. Here we have a nice verb in Spanish, which is enamorarse de. Uh, it means to fall in love with. Um, and we have also the adjective form, estar enamorado or estar enamorada, to be in love with. So here we have the example sentence. Ella se enamoró de mí tiempo después. She fell in love with me sometime after. Um, and um, I think Marilyn is saying, yeah, eh, todas las palabras tienen un tiempo. Um, I think she's referring to the tense that we are using here. Um, so in these cases where we use verbs with prepositions, we would like to um, add these verbs to show them in different tenses, like in the past, in the future, in the present, uh, so that you can also practice the, the, the verb conjugation, which is very important in Spanish. And in this case, we have a sentence in the uh, past simple form, ella se enamoró de mí tiempo después, so with the preposition de. And we have a last verb, uh, that's very important at, and uses the preposition de, um, which is depender de. Um, it means to depend on. So um, I can say something like, my, mi decisión depende de tu ayuda. My decision depends on your help. Um, and here we are establishing a, a relation of dependency uh, through the verb depender plus the preposition de. And I think we are almost coming to an end. Uh, so David, um, you can maybe uh, talk a little bit about those verbs that need the preposition con. Yes, Which? so um, can everyone still hear me? I got the rainbow spinning wheel of death on my, on my browser and I wanna make sure I didn't go anywhere for anyone. David, can I can hear, hear you. Perfect. I can see you and hear you perfectly. So then we'll just keep going right on through. Um, one of my favorite verb preposition combos in Spanish is soñar con, which translates literally to to dream with. Soñar means to dream, con means with, but in English we would say to dream of or to dream about. This one really just tickles me for some reason. Um, to dream with something kind of feels um, more of an active process, um, more fantastical. And you can dream about something while you're sleeping and you can dream about something in the real world. So the example sentence that we wrote was, yo sueño con mejorar mi comunidad. I dream of improving my community. Um, I even like soñar con better than the English dream about. I feel like it just makes me, um, it makes me smile to dream with something. So that's one example I really, really like. And then the next one would be um, contar con. So contar means to count in this context. And con means with, but we actually say um, count on in English. So an example would be, podemos contar con tu ayuda. Can we count on your help? And then let's move on to the last example, which is um, quedar, con. quedar con. So we would say, uh, in English, we would just say to meet, but uh, in Spanish, quedar con. Quedar usually means um, to stay or remain, especially re when you use it reflexively, quedarse, yo me quedo en casa, I'm staying, I'm remaining at home. Um, when you say quedar con, that means to meet. Um, so you would say, el viernes voy a quedar con algunos amigos, on Friday I'm going to meet some friends. 
So just, um, I think that's our last example of verbs in Spanish that require um, a preposition that doesn't necessarily map to English. But now yes. let's, let's go ahead and talk about some verbs in Spanish that don't require prepositions that otherwise would in English. So we're gonna kind of flip it on its head and say, in which, in which cases do you uh, use a verb in Spanish and actually not follow it with a preposition? So mm -hmm. one of my favorites is buscar. In English, we would say to look for or to search for. And in Spanish, you actually don't have a preposition after it. It's just buscar and then the direct object following. So you say, estoy buscando un libro sobre historia. I'm looking for a book about history. David, what is the next verb? Yeah, and another very useful verb is escuchar, which doesn't have a preposition in Spanish. So we just go directly to uh, the piece of music, the song, or whatever we are listening to. So uh, in, in Spanish, we would say, nos gusta escuchar música. We like to listen to music. So in Spanish, we don't need a preposition. Uh, you can just yeah, ignore it. Um, so we have buscar, uh, which means to look for. We have escuchar, which means to listen at. So um, the verb to look at is mirar in Spanish. And um, here we have the question. ¿Puedes mirar este artículo, por favor? Can you look at this article, please? Uh, so as we can see, there is no preposition here. Um, we just look at something, mirar algo. And the last one is a verb that I like also very a lot in, in Spanish and also in, in English, because esperar has two meanings in, in English. We have uh, the verb to hope for or to wait for. So we use the same verb without a preposition. So we can also say, me están esperando en el aeropuerto. They are waiting for me in the airport. So as we can see, there is no preposition here. And if I'm hoping um, my friend gets better uh, because he's sick, then I say, espero eh, su mejoría, espero que esté bien. No preposition after esperar. So uh, this was a long list uh, with verbs, with prepositions, and also without prepositions, as we, can, as we could see at the end. And yeah, we know that this topic is also very complex. Uh, prepositions are uh, one of the most difficult things when learning a language because uh, every language has its own uh, preposition system. So uh, sometimes we can translate them. Sometimes uh, those little words are just uh, unique in, 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 in this language, in this target language that we are learning. And Spanish is a language where we use prepositions, I think, in, in a slightly different way than in English. So it's better to um, get used to it, to learn that um, by heart. Eh, es bueno acostumbrarse a esas preposiciones. And I think we can um, maybe, uh, yeah, mirar algunas preguntas. We can look at some questions uh, that our viewers already posted. Um, if you haven't, um, you still have time to post something. Um, David, I saw a good question here. So maybe you can weigh in on this one. What about ir a, such as in ir a pedir? Is this another example or is this different mm -hmm. um, as going to? So I think I'd love to hear what you have to say. Yeah. I'm so, not 100%. Yeah. In this case, um, there are some uh, constructions in the language, like in Spanish, where we see that prepositions are um, used in the case of ir, for example. So in this case, we are expressing a movement. Uh, we are moving to a different place um, to ask for something. But that was, uh, that is, uh, we have here an open interpretation because this is the expression um, that we use to build also uh, something that we use to, to, to build uh, the, the future uh, tense. So we have something that is called in Spanish futuro perifrastico. It's a very uh, complicated name, but it basically says if you use ir plus a plus a verb, 
that's something that equals uh, future uh, tense, um, forming the future tense. So in this case, we can also interpret this as something like is referring to the future, ir a pedir. And in this case, we have a verb, pedir. But if we say ir al parque, eh, that's correct. So every time that we use the verb ir, we need the preposition a to express the place that we are going to, as it happens also in English. Um, if you use, for example, ir plus the preposition en, I'm expecting you to use uh, the mean that you are using uh, for transportation. Uh, so ir en autobús, ir en coche, or en carro, for example. So there we see that if we use the, the verb, uh, the same verb, ir, but we change the preposition, then we might be saying something different. Yeah, And if we say ir en el parque, that, that's not correct in Spanish, for example. So that's why prepositions are so important in, in Spanish. So when we are expressing movement with the verb ir, uh, please use the preposition a. If you are uh, going to use uh, the future tense, you're going to say something about your future plans, you can use ir a, uh, which is very, um, yeah, simple, straightforward. So I think, I hope this um, answers um, your question. And yeah, so here I see, Maralyn using uh, the verb preguntar por, and this this is great. If I see your mother, if I meet your mother, I will ask her about you. Um, yo le pregunto por ti. Uh, that's that's great. Como la canción de Bad Bunny. <laughs> yeah, reggaeton. <clears throat> that's great. Um, yeah. So, David, so, this question also from Marlene um, touches on the impersonal ah. Uh, maybe it's called the personal ah. Uh, I can't remember, but it was what I was talking about earlier, where the you need the word ah uh, in front of a uh, direct object in most cases when you're when the direct object is um, a person or something that has person-like qualities. Um, so, I think you can do it to pets too. I'm not sure. This has always confused me, but I think if you wanted to, uh, and I'm sorry, I keep throwing the questions to you, but you are the native speaker and you know much more what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but to clarify, I think Marlene would be correct here. Even though mirar usually doesn't take a preposition afterward, if it's followed by um, a person to look at a person, um, then you would use the word ah between, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's correct. So uh, if we remember the, the example sentence that we used to explain, to introduce this verb, we had mirar este artículo. So we weren't referring there to a person. So in this case, the preposition doesn't depend on the verb necessarily. Um, so we don't have always mirar a. Uh, the preposition is here conditioned by the presence of a person as a direct object. I'm, I'm looking at someone. So in these cases, uh, we use the preposition a. Uh. And uh, stay tuned because this is a topic that we know we are going to uh, introduce very soon. Uh, it's something that is even a uh, uh, pain for uh, Spanish native speakers, um, where we tend to um, yeah, use this preposition just because we are referring to a person. So that's, that's the condition. But uh, if we change that um, and we use uh, an object, instead of a person um, to build this sentence, then I would say estoy mirando un programa de televisión, for example. Yeah, I'm looking at a TV show, watching it. Um, so yeah, we will explain this um, further in one of our next episodes, but it's a very, it's a very uh, good um, example, a good question. And here I see that uh, Lee is asking uh, if we accidentally use a preposition for the last four words, we, will we still be understood? Um, yes, I think the context makes it clear as well. Uh, it depends on the context, depende del contexto, for example. Um, but I, I think in most of the cases, cases it's clear what we uh, mean uh, by using a verb with a preposition that's unfortunately not the correct one, uh, but it depends on the situation. Uh, the most um, useful thing to know is that it's better to know the preposition, but don't feel um, 
overwhelmed by that. If you don't know the proposition, you can just uh, try to guess. Um, because we are talking about uh, communicating our needs. So it's about communication. It's not about perfection. And even native speakers make mistakes. So I encourage you to use these verbs uh, to learn the, the, the meaning and also to um, um, yeah, um, create a sentence that you can use on your um, daily life yeah, in Spanish. Yeah? For example, voy al trabajo en coche. Uh, that would be a sentence where we use the verb ir uh, with both prepositions. And that's very useful because that's what we do every day. Right. Also, one quick point um, before we throw it over to our test challenge sentences is that when you speak with uh, people who are not native speakers of English and they speak English with you and they maybe use the wrong preposition, in most cases, you know what they're talking about. So in Spanish, we say um, depender de. So depends, to say something depends on, we say depender de. Um, mi decisión depende de tu ayuda. My decision depends on your help. But someone who is a native speaker of Spanish might try to translate that phrase depende de in English as depend of because they know that de means of. Uh, so if someone said, if a native Spanish speaker said to you, my decision depends of your help, you would know what he or she was talking about mm -hmm. um, because the context informs you. So if you think about going from English to Spanish, a Spanish speaker will likely be able to understand what you mean if you choose the wrong preposition. Um, so just don't be afraid to try to use them and get it wrong because you will get it wrong a few times. I still get it wrong all the time. Um, but just know that most speakers will be able to understand you. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So we can also see that in, in English when uh, non-native speakers are speaking in English and you notice like little changes in some words that you wouldn't use yeah but it's about communicating and uh if there are no more questions we are ready uh for uh some little sentences that we prepare for you where um we want to know uh what preposition you would choose maybe we can start with the first sentence it's a verb that is actually a false friend um because the verb asistir, as we saw uh, um, in the explanations before, means to attend. So, estamos asistiendo una clase de español los martes. And here we have three options. Um, first, the preposition a. Uh, the second option is con, or the third option is the. What would be the right preposition? So, you can write a preposition or you can um, type the number. So, this is this is great, Davy. We've taught you well, or you listened well, either one. But everyone is getting the right answer. The answer is number one or ah. Um, Estamos asistiendo a una clase de español los, um, martes. los martes. I forgot what the sentence was. But mm -hmm. good job to everyone. You were paying attention. That's so great to see. We remember that asistir a is to attend. So to attend a class, asistir a una clase. Yeah, that's awesome. What about this sentence? This Do question. It. ¿Te acuerdas mm -hmm, nuestra primera cita? Do you remember our first date? What is the preposition that, would, that we would use here in, in Spanish? So again, three options. The first one is a, the second one is de, or the third one is por. What would be the right answer? This is great. 
this is one of the most difficult topics when learning languages. Um, that's what I told you, and I'm always suffering because sometimes I don't know what preposition I should use, even in English. Uh, but you are doing great. This is um, so the right answer um, is D. Yeah, acordarse D. So uh, if we use the, the preposition de as Peter is suggesting, um, then we would have te acuerdas de nuestra primera cita. Do you remember our first date? Uh, it's very important to use the preposition um, because um, I just I explained that there are two uh, very similar forms for the verb to remember. Uh, don't, don't get confused by that. Uh, take this uh, question as a good example for you. Adapt it uh, with whatever you want to remember, and uh, don't forget to use the preposition D. And uh, I think um, this is the last question for the next session. Uh, don't forget it. Um, it's a question um, where we start um, with a preposition. Mm -hmm. ¿Qué estás pensando? So, uh, we will leave this for you as a homework and we will check the answer next Tuesday. So um, in the meantime, I'll give my little goodbye spiel and say, be sure to follow us on social media if you have more questions or just wanna hang out, um, learn more about language learning and Spanish and all that good stuff. You can find us at Babel USA here on Facebook, but also on Twitter and Instagram. I think we're, we have a TikTok now too. So be on the lookout for our social media channels. And you can also do a lot of great reading about language learning at Babbel Magazine, and we'll post the link below in the comments. And then also on Quora in our Everything Language Space, growing quickly, we love new users, new submissions, um, a lot of really great content there too. And this week, I think we're going to drop the link again to our survey, the Google form, where you can give us some feedback. We haven't given it in a while, but we're curious to see um, how we've been doing, uh, what you all think, and if you have any more ideas for future topic episodes. Um, we know that there's so much more to cover. We we keep mentioning every week, oh, we'll get to this another time, and we'll get to this another time. We promise we will get to all of it um, soon enough. But if you have anything that's just a, a burning desire of yours um, to have us talk about, please let us know in the form uh, and we'll post it here too. Uh, other than that, thank you so much for tuning in. Always a pleasure to see your faces. Um, welcome to the newcomers. Hope to see you next week. Everyone uh, who's been with us from the beginning, thank you so much for sticking through with us. Um, we're so, so delighted to do these mm -hmm. and it's been so much fun. Um, we'll be back next Tuesday, a week from today at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So stay tuned for that. W, do you have any closing words? Yeah, it was uh, a great experience again. Thank you very much for your attention. And I'm already looking forward to next Tuesday. I'm very happy. And yeah, please um, add your questions. I see that people are a bit confused with the verb acordarse and the word acuerdo. Uh, don't get confused by that because acuerdo is actually a noun, which um, looks very similar to um, the verb um, when you conjugate this for the first person, me acuerdo, that means I remember, but acuerdo actually as a noun, el acuerdo means the agreement. So estar de acuerdo is to be in like on the agreement. This is a, a location in Spanish. So don't get confused by that. Uh, this is just to close this session. Um, if you have any follow-up questions, uh, feel free to uh, post them here and we will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, it was a great pleasure. Thank you, David. Thank you, everyone. Uh, gracias a todas y a todos. And see you next Tuesday. Bye, everyone. Bye.